Come on, let the Lord hear you this morning. Break the music. Let me hear the clappers of the... Clap your hands, all ye people. Come on, clap your hands, all ye people. what you come to do. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. I come to give him glory. I come to give him honor. I come to lift him up. I come to use my voice to honor him. Hallelujah. I give it all to him. I surrender it all to him. Troubles, worries, cares, situations, problems, I put it all in the master's hands. How many know that our life is in his hands? He didn't give us the spirit of fear. We shouldn't worry because if we put it in his hands, we know we serve a God that doesn't fail. We know we serve a God that won't let you down because your life is in the master's hands. Clap your hands and praise him right there. Don't have to worry, and don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning, troubles they don't last away. For there's a friend in Jesus who will wipe your tears away. And if your heart is broken, just lift your hands and say, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is Lift your hands right here. Come on, lift your hands. Everybody say, Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hands. With Jesus. Get you down. They seem to get you down. And all your friends and loved ones. All your friends and loved 
someone. I know where to be found. I know where to be found. Listen, remember. Remember there's a friend in Jesus. Who will wipe your tears. Who will wipe your tears away. Has your heart ever been broken? And if your heart is broken. Just lift your hands and say. Come on, Zion, surrender. Oh, I know. to slip your hands and give it over to him. Just wave your troubles away. Wave your troubles away. Come on, we're going to give it to him this morning. I surrender it all. My troubles, my worries, my cares, all of my burdens, I bring them to you, Jesus, because I know you can handle it. All of my faith is in you. Some may trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. But I put my trust in the name of the Lord our God. Come on, Zion, lift your voice. Oh, I know. I know that I can make it. I know. the problem is together this morning. Come on. Everybody say, my life. My life is in your hands. Not just a part of my life. Not just a part that I want you to work on. But my entire life. My life. My life is in your hands. That means your will is what's best for me. That means I'm coming to you to look for the answers. That means I'm giving it over to you even when I don't understand it. My life, my life, my life is in your hands. Somebody clap your hands right there and praise him. Praise the name of the Lord our God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. My life. Amen. Make it personal. My life. My life is in your hand. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lamb of God. Bless you. Amen. At this time, we come before you as we get ready to go before the throne of grace. And thereafter, we will remain standing for the reading of God's holy word. If you're able to stand, we ask you to stand at this time. Let us look unto the Lord. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, as we come before you upon this day, again, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, oh God, for blessing us one more time to come before you and assemble. O oh Lord, that we may worship you in the beauty of holiness. We ask you, O oh Heavenly Father, right now to bless, G to bless GRTDC 
and the inhabitants thereof. O oh God, that our mind and our heart will be affixed on one accord, which is to give you the glory, for all glory and honor belongs to you. We ask your God right now in a special request on this day, Lord, to touch those, touch many of those who are sick and afflicted in their bodies, who are feeble. For we know that sickness is not of you, so therefore we bind that sickness demon and send him back to the pits of hell from whence he came. For you declare in your holy word, you came that we may have life and life more abundantly. Lord, we just want to thank you right now. We ask you, God, to touch those, touch those who will bereave, oh God. Comfort them, oh God. As you declare, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. We ask the Heavenly Father right now to touch the country that we live in, the world, all of the world crises that's going on. But most of God, that in this, that our hearts and our determination will grow even more steadfast, even more deep-rooted, and which is to follow you. We ask your Heavenly Father right now to bless the delegates, those who are traveling from the International Youth Congress of God. Cover them with your blood, with your divine protection, that they will have safe journeys and traveling mercies. We ask your Heavenly Father on the day, Lord, to touch our pastor, the shepherd of this flock of oh God, as he continues to feed us and to nourish us and to take up the charge which you have given upon him, O oh God elect. Bless the church. Bless those who are on their way right now, Lord Jesus. Cover them with your blood. Bless all the auxiliaries, department heads, O oh God. Bless those souls who are going down in Jesus' name, O oh God, that they may be filled with your precious gift of the Holy Ghost. And again, we just want to say thank you. And we take no glory for ourselves. Yea, all glory and honor belongs to you. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, we pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, thank God, amen. We're going to ask you to remain standing for the reading of God's holy word. And this morning, it's coming out of the book of Genesis. It's easy because that's the first book in the Holy Bible. Genesis, the 22nd chapter. And... Uh, I'll start at first one. Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the first verse. And it reads as follows. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told them. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off, afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to thee. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife. And they went, both of them, together. And verse 7, And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, the both of them together, bless the Lord. 
And, you know, I'm going to take you back. Amen. I know Mother Hargrove, right? Remember the old saying, she used to sing this song. says, the Lord will make a way somehow. When beneath the cross I'll bow, he will take away each sorrow. Let him have your burden now. When the Lord bear down so heavy, the weight is shown upon my brow. But there's a sweet relief in knowing, Sister Perry, that the Lord, say it with me, that the Lord, the Lord, the Lord will make a way somehow. Bless the Lord. Oh, hallelujah.
You better than good to me. So many doors, so many ways, so many times. You better than good. So many doors, so many ways, so many times. Come on, Zion, say you better than good to me. you're grateful. Let every grateful heart give him glory. I am grateful, 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 great, grateful, great, great. Come on, help me. Say grateful, 
You're grateful. Let me see your hands. Truly grateful. Grateful for your goodness and your mercy. Come on, say grateful, 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 out to the Lord with a voice of triumph if you really believe the Lord has been good to you come on show some signs if the Lord has ever done anything for you and if there's something in your spirit that wants to tell him thank you let it flow from your belly Shama, let it flow from your belly redeemed of the Lord say so the Bible says let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hands of the enemy anybody been snatched out of the hands of the enemy he thought he had you he thought he had you he thought he had you what's the eye he thought he had you he thought he had you but thanks be unto God. Who causes us to triumph. Come on somebody, everybody triumphant, triumphant. Let me hear a triumphant sound. A triumphant sound. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 halleluj
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that has breath, let everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I just want to thank you. 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 I want to thank you for being so good to me. So good to me. Oh, Lord, I just. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to thank you. I want to thank you.
yes, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And at this time, I'm here to welcome all of our first-time visitors. Hallelujah. Both virtually and here in the temple. If by chance this is your first time here worshiping with us, we ask that you stand in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. And we thank the Lord for you. We thank the Lord for each and every one of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, a couple of months ago, I told you I still believe God. Last month, I reminded you that God is good. Yes. Well, this morning, let me encourage you. Don't give up. Don't give up. Touch your neighbor and tell them, don't. Don't give up. Look at the person on the other side and say, don't. Don't give up. Virtual church, don't. Don't give up. Hold on. Help is on the way. The Lord promised never to leave us, and he promised never to forsake us. Don't give up. Don't give up. On behalf of our pastor, Apostle Fields, our assistant pastor, Elder Ronald Young Sr., and the Greater Refuge Temple Church, we love you with the love of the Lord, and we hope you get everything you came for. Don't leave the same way. If you need the Holy Ghost, he's here for you. If you need healing, he's here to do that too. Don't give up, if by chance you don't have a church home. Won't you consider this temple of worship where we still, we still believe God and we know that God is good and we're determined we're not gonna give up. God bless you in Jesus' name.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together one more time. Bless the Lord. Amen. For all visitors in the house. At this time, we come before you. It's offering time. Oh, it's offering time. Come on, we can do a little bit better than that. I say it's offering time in the house. Bless the Lord. If you desire an envelope, the ushers, amen, they will pass one to you. Bless the Lord. And for those who will be giving electronically, the deacons will be receiving you in the social hall. For those who are virtual and online, amen, at the bottom of the screen, it will show to you the various ways of giving. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us stand as we look unto the Lord for the blessing of the offering. Oh, gracious God, as we come before you one more time, Lord, we just want to say thank you. We just want to say thank you, oh God, for blessing us to just return a small portion of what you have blessed us with so abundantly. We ask your God that it will be used mightily for the uplifting and the upbuilding of your kingdom. Bless those who are giving on today, O oh God, the fruit of the labors. Bless those who desire to give, but don't at this time. And God, in this we still thank you. And when it's all said and done, we give you the glory. We give you the honor in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. So at this time, you'll be in the hands of the usher. And again, if you're given electronically, the deacons will be in the social hall. Bless the Lord. Yes.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Truly, we thank God for all that has been said and done. Amen. And now we are going to get ready to go into higher heights and deeper depth. And that is the Word of God. And it is coming to us this morning from our very own, our very own shepherd of this flock, our pastor, God's overseer. Amen. So let us stand and receive our pastor, the Honorable Apostle W. Michael Fields. Bless you. Bless you. Why don't you give the Lord some praise? He's worthy. He's the reason why we're here. Come on and give him glory. Praise him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Now, listen, I've been in church all my life, and all the time when the preacher says, give God a praise, folks immediately start clapping. But you have to do more than clap. Yeah. Praise comes out of your mouth also. So, yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. That sounds much better. Yeah. Open your mouth in his presence. And give him praise. Bless you. You may be seated. And I will bless him at all times. Praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. If you understand the word, somebody shout out another praise. Oh, amen. He is worthy. Honoring him because he is the boss. And I'm so glad that the Lord is in control. And to our assistant pastor in his absence, and we are continuing to pray for Lady Young. Uh, but the Lord has blessed her. She's home now. She's home. Amen. Yeah, it's all right. Let's give him praise. Amen. And we're continuing to pray for my sister Beth. The Lord will continue to touch her body. He's doing his thing. Yeah, look down your row and say, God is doing his thing. Yes. We honor all of the deacons and ministers and to the mothers and missionaries and to all of you, the people of God, and to those of you who have connected with us via live stream. We say praise the Lord. And we always say it, whatever God is doing in this house, get ready. He's going to do it in your house. Can God do it? Yes. Will God do it? Yes. The book of Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 3. Familiar passage of scripture. The thought the Lord dropped in my heart. Lamentations, the third chapter, verses 21 through 24. Father, we love you and we adore you. Once again, you have brought us into your house, not just in the house, but we're in your presence. We're grateful, Father. So many gather together and you're not there, but we can feel you here. Thank you for your joy. Your strength is in the room. Bless us now through your word, your holy word, your mighty word. All that we need, we know, we'll find it in your word. Touch, heal, set free, deliver in this house. Do it all through your word. And we'll remember to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name. Say it with me in Jesus' name. Amen. Lamentations chapter 3. I'll begin reading at the 21st verse. I won't stop until I've read through the 24th. It sounds like this. This I recall to my mind. 
Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word sanctified in our hearts that we may grow thereby. Let's read the 22nd verse together in concert. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail. Before you sit down, I want you to give someone your personal testimony. Say it and say it with strength and power. Look them in the face and say, I'm doing better than I thought I was. Yeah. Some of y'all don't believe that, but to those who really believe that, look somebody in the face and say, I'm doing better than I thought I was. Yeah. Yeah, I felt that. As believers, and you've heard me talk about the journey many times, but in order to truly understand the journey, this life that we're living for the Lord, you you have to have a unique perspective and you can't be guided by your flesh or your emotions. Although it's easy to get stuck in how you feel about stuff. But you can't allow how you feel or what you see tell you how to react how to behave in that situation. You, you have to be guided by faith and trust in God. Now, I say that and I, I, I also understand that there are some who are in the house that really don't operate in faith. And the Bible tells us that whatever we do outside of faith is sin. It is impossible to please God without faith and we are admonished in his word to trust him in all of our ways he'll direct our path it's important to acknowledge as a follower of Jesus Christ that just because we shout and speak in tongues we're not exempted from facing difficulties yeah In fact, I would dare say that the word of God teaches us that it's because of your commitment to godly living. It's because you desire to live holy. It's it's because you desire to please God that there will be challenges. Look at somebody and say, there will be challenges. So I, I don't want you to be foolish with your salvation and think that every day is supposed to be a sunny day. I don't, I don't want you to be foolish enough to think that there are going to be no rainy days in your life. It's essential that encountering obstacles uh, and going through what you're going through that you are not in the place where you feel you're being pushed away from the goodness of God. It's part of your growth. I said it's part of your growth. One more time. It's part of your growth. And the word refinement comes to my mind. He knows, David said, the way that I take after he has tried me. I shall come forth. I need to stop right there. Just look at somebody and say, and I shall come forth. Mm -hmm. I shall come forth. Doesn't the word of God tell us that there would be trials and tribulations in this world? But that same Bible also 
assures us of God's presence and his faithfulness all throughout the journey. Listen, even before you got the Holy Ghost, he was there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Proof of that is he did not allow you to get cut off in your foolishness. He didn't allow you to die in your filth. He didn't allow the circumstances of your past to be so overwhelming that you were not able to be here today. God did all of this. Look at somebody and say, God did all of this. Yet in all of your tongue talking, in all of your shouting, there are going to be trials and tribulations in this world. I think sometimes uh, when we come down off the mountain, we should take time to explore the nature of our challenges, the purpose that they serve in your spiritual growth. You wouldn't pray the way that you pray now had it not been the problem. You would know God the way you know him had it not been for the problem. There has been some growth. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just lift your hands and say, there has been some growth. And we had to learn that we overcome these obstacles through our faith. And through our faith, we have found encouragement, not just in what we read, but God speaks to us. Yes, Lord. He, he speaks to us in our dilemmas. He, he speaks to us. Have you ever had tears coming down your face and all of a sudden the Holy Ghost starts a conversation with you? Letting you know everything's going to be all right. Have you ever been in the kitchen thinking about all the bills you have to pay and the word just comes so sweetly in your spirit? I'll make a way for you. Yes. We find encouragement even in the midst of our adversity. Got to learn how to look for God even in your struggles. Look for him. I, I know he's somewhere around here going through and he promised he would not leave me all by myself. And I know there are different types of challenges, whether it's persecution or whether it's opposition, trials and tribulations, temptation, whether it's sickness, whether it's spiritual warfare, whether, hallelujah, it's spiritual dryness something we don't talk about enough. Not only do the saints go through warfare, but there are some dry seasons that we endure also. Many times in this faith journey that we're taking, but the Lord has a way of restoring our soul. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and say, he restoreth my soul. And I know we're, we're in the midst of all these church folk and church people don't want to admit that they've had dry seasons in their life. <clears throat> yes, days when you prayed and the prayer hit the ceiling and came back and smacked you in the face. Hallelujah. Dry seasons when you, you felt like you weren't in God and he wasn't in you. And, but he has a way of restoring my soul. It don't mean I backslid. It just means that I, I had some dryness, hallelujah, in my life. And God had to show me that he has the ability to restore my soul. I'll give you streams in the desert and I'll, I'll water the dry places of your life. He told Jeremiah to tell the people, seek me and you'll find me. And when you search for me with your whole heart, hallelujah, you'll discover that I'm with you in every season of your life. I'm there. I'm faithful to you. I'm a very present help in the time of trouble. And I won't do you like man. I won't treat 
treat you like flesh. Hallelujah. There is no failure in me. There is no shadow of turning with me. There's no shadiness in my character. I'm, I'm not a sometimey God. I'm not the kind of God, hallelujah, that smiles in your face and talks about you behind your back. As a matter of fact, I'm the kind of God that walks before you. And I'll, I'll clear the way for you. Hallelujah. I've already walked through your future and spoken to the demons that were assigned to your life and said, touch not mine anointed. Do my prophet no harm. Look down your row and say, that's the kind of God we serve. So it's important for us people of God to remember that these things that happen in our lives they're not meant to break us but they are meant to refine us and bring us closer to our God and every challenge we face hallelujah God wants us to discover his strength his comfort Hallelujah. And guidance all uh, through our lives uh, and rely on his word. Lean on my promise. Hallelujah. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. I'm not going to leave you hanging, but uh, I'm the kind of God that knows how to put doors where there is no door. Make ways out of no way. Hallelujah. All you have to do is persevere, endure as a good soldier, and you'll see the results of your faith. I'll bring you out with a high hand. Didn't I tell you many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. If you would just be still and let me cultivate the uh, hallelujah, that dependence you should have on me because uh, the arms of flesh will fail you. Hearts and minds of people, even with the best intentions, will disappoint you. But I'm with you always. If I say I can do it, rest assured I can do it. If I say I can heal it, rest assured I can heal it. If I say I can make a way, rest assured I can make a way. Hallelujah. But as time goes by, some of the saints, instead of developing a, a stronger praise, will begin, hallelujah, to develop a spirit of complaining and murmuring. You've got to be careful, people of God, when you're going through things, that you don't allow the situation to push you into a place of complaining and murmuring. Even in your testimonies, all you talk about is the pain and the what they did and what they said and nothing is said about what God said he can do about your situation so I need you to help me preach before I even get in the text look at somebody and say don't be a complainer no because uh, yes people have a tendency uh, even uh, hallelujah they start praising God with an attitude you know instead of saying hallelujah they throw it at him or they'll sit in his presence and roll their eyes and uh, treat God as though he has done something bad to them and understand uh, yes God allows things to happen but uh, I told you earlier it's not for you your destruction it's for your refining he's he's pulling you closer he's he's strengthening your faith he's bringing you to another level hallelujah that could exist in the reality of your hallelujah relationship with God because he's a real God he wants you to see more of him he wants to hallelujah you to go deeper in him and trust and the experiences of life are the only way you get to see who God really is. I'm sorry for those of you who feel like all I need to do is read a book and I'll know everything I need to know about God. Oh no, he's, he's 
more than a book. And uh, I'm sorry for those of you who feel like all I need to do is go to that conference and uh, I'll learn everything I need to know. No, you need more than a conference. You've got to walk before him. You've got to learn how to talk to him. He, you've got to learn how he moves in sickness. and uh, got to learn how he moves when uh, there's no money in your pocket. So, so when you testify, it's not something you just copied off of somebody else. And, uh, my testimony is my own. Uh, I was down and he picked me up. I, I was sick and he healed my body. I was lost and he found me. Look at somebody say, I've got my own testimony. I, I don't have to how it depend on what you say. I know for myself. You got to come to a place where you're not complaining about the situation. And it came to me perhaps the saints complain because they forget. Hallelujah. You, you forget about what he's already done. You, you forgot about how he already brought you out. I, I think that's why Israel responded to their situations the way that they did. Could you imagine after being delivered from bondage, looking behind you and saying, you should have left us in Egypt last. The, hallelujah. They couldn't find a place of praise or worship. Hallelujah. Instead, they responded by grumbling and complaining, even quarreling. There's no water here. There's no food here. There's, uh, we had onions in the Egypt land. And, uh, hallelujah. But every time they needed God supply water came out of a rock hallelujah manna came down from heaven could you imagine they didn't have to go to Dunkin Donuts they didn't have to go anywhere for breakfast there was bread laying in the grass when they got up in the morning but they complained even about that I want gravy with my bit you know, you know how they do. And uh, they got tired of that. He told the quail, gave them a new flight plan and told them to fly over there. Hallelujah. And drop in their laps. They, they had so much quail they didn't know, didn't know what to do with it. And uh, while they were eating the meat, they were still complaining complaining about the ambiance of the restaurant I don't like where we are I don't I don't like what's going on God had done unthinkable miracles when's the last time you saw an ocean or a sea open up in front of you when the, when's the last time you got up in the morning and there was bread laying on your lawn they didn't have to go for clothes it would seem like their shoes grew with their feet no holes in the soul of them look at somebody say he knows how to take care of us he was faithful to them and all they had to do was follow his plan listen when we get into a space of complaining hallelujah after a while you're not really complaining about the situation it's really a complaint about God in the back of the complainer's mind you're questioning why would God bring me here? Why would God let this happen? And your complaining now is not rooted in what you see, but it's coming from the rudiments of your heart. If you really love God, you won't let what you see intimidate you out of your praise. If you really love God, 
Some of you have fallen in love with folks you should have never given your heart to. He was abusive. He messed with your mind. And you still snuggled up. And here you've got a God that knew you before you knew yourself. He's not a liar. He's able to back up everything he says. And as soon as you see some trouble, you walk away in a different direction. He is faithful. And I hear the Holy Ghost screaming in my spirit to say to somebody, stand still and see the salvation of your gods. You need to remember, come to a place where you're not going to forget what is already done. And that will give you the tenacity to speak to your situation and say these words. If he did it before, he'll do it again. Say it out of your mouth. If he did it before, he'll do it again. I dare you to say it one more time. If he did it before, he'll do it again. If, come on, fill in the blank. If he healed before, he'll heal again. If he delivered before, he'll deliver. If he opened the door before, he'll do it again. He's the same today. Yesterday, I feel my help. And forever. Sometimes when you, when you don't know what to say, when you're praying, just say these words, Lord, do it again. Uh, in so much pain the words can't even come out of your mouth uh, write it on a piece of paper Lord do it again oh he's uh, he can do it uh, over and over again that's why John said grace for grace every time I turn around he's doing something on my behalf so I dare say that the antidotes to what seems to be amnesia is recollection of what God has already done in your life. Just look at three people and say, remember, 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 remember what he did. Remember what he says. Remember how he did it. Remember, I'm not a man that I should lie neither am I the son of man that I need to repent must come to pass scripture text here out of the book of lamentations was written by the prophet Jeremiah and he had given Israel prophecies of desolation the desolation of Judah and Jerusalem and you understand the history of the text speaks of their neglects their disobedience their rebellion against God's way he said turn to me come back to me worship me serve me and there's no good thing that I'll withhold from you if you walk up rightly before me hallelujah but they walked away from God hallelujah they were negligent in their holy living hallelujah they had a once a week lifestyle I'll be right once a week but the rest of the week I do what I want and God said oh no you've got to be holy every day of your life You've got to be holy in the way that you walk and the way that you talk. I chose you. I didn't, and I didn't choose you to be like everybody else. I didn't choose you to talk like everybody else. You are a peculiar people. I chose 
calls you to stand out are meant for you to be different from everybody else and you ought to walk with pride hallelujah holiness is the right way to go because I'm a holy God I want my children to be holy I want you to look like you serve me I want you to live like you, you serve me. So, so when the world looks at you, they'll see the righteousness of a true and living God. I want you to be the example and I want them to see and feel the fervent power of my kingdom so when you walk like I walk even when you talk like I talk even the demons of hell will have to move out of your way because you're my child and when the world sees you they'll see me don't you know hallelujah that holiness is right don't you know that holiness is my will don't you know even the benefits of being a holy people I'll withhold no good thing from you I'll give you things that people say you cannot have. I'll sit you in places that people say you can't sit in. It's holiness that establishes your headship. You're not in the back, but I'll put you in front. Even the demons will say, excuse me, and let you have that chair because of a whole Holy people, a chosen generation, and I'll let you walk on the high places of the earth, and I'll feed you with the heritage. I feel my hell. I'll feed you with the heritage of Jacob. Hallelujah. I find somebody and tell them there are benefits to being holy. But they decided, hallelujah, to go against the grain. And the prophet, with tears coming down his face, told them 70 years of bondage will you have except you turn back to God. They would not do it. And because of this, Nebuchadnezzar would come into the city and turn everything upside down and the Levite would stand in the temple and write these words they have brought their banners their ensigns into the house of God they, they tore down the silver and the gold and they ripped the doors off and dismembered the pews hallelujah and dragged the people of God into Babylon. That's what they did. So much so until the people had to write another song. It was a song of calamity. By the rivers of Babylon there we sat down. Our hearts wept when we remembered Zion and the enemy came to them and said why don't you sing one of those songs of Zion and they said how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Don't you take your freedom for granted. Don't you take your holiness for granted. You'll end up in a strange place. Hallelujah. Look at somebody and say, if he made you holy, stay holy. If he set you free, stay free. If he delivered you, stay delivered. Did you hear what I said? Whatever God 
God has done in your life. Don't you let the devil pull you out of there. Look at your neighbor and say, you better stay where God puts you. So here they are in Babylon. And the prophet is messed up. He's crying and fussing and complaining over the condition of the people of God. He is lamenting. So much so until he writes and said, I was so much a mess until I've become a derision to my own people. They started mocking him. They started teasing him. Here comes that old crying prophet. Here comes that fussing preacher. All he does is complain and murmur. He complained about how Israel was acting. He complained about how the Babylonians were acting. He fussed about their pain. He, he complained about the situation. And he personally was in a place where he felt like he was having a mental breakdown. How much is enough? How long you gonna let us go through what we're going through? How long you gonna let the enemy do what he's doing to us? Why are you doing it like this? And you can't do it like that. They weren't just making fun of him, but they were laughing even at his faith. Uh, laughing at the fact uh, that he actually believed in this God uh, and that's what the devil will do uh, he'll mess with your thought process uh, and try to make you feel like uh, you shouldn't have prayed in the first place uh, why are you praising God like that uh, and you're still going through the stuff uh, you've been going through uh, that's a mess when you come to church and you're still wrestling with an attitude because of what you've been going through what they did and what they said look at somebody and help me preach this morning and say neighbor the worst thing you can do is let the situation control your mind I came to tell somebody you need to snap out of it and snap out of it now he's still my redeemer he's still my way maker oh Lord you need to pray before the altar call lay your hand on your own self and say snap out of it in the name of Jesus every imagination that's against the will of God I rebuke it he didn't bring me here to die I shall live I thank you Holy Ghost he was breaking down mentally and emotionally sometimes you can go through so much until you feel like you're losing it hallelujah I'm looking at some of y'all now with that grumbling spirit you won't even tell the Lord thank you you won't even wave your hand because of what they did you don't like your job you don't like this one tired of what he did to you and you come to church all upset I see you you ain't said hallelujah yet fussing in the pew look at your neighbor and say neighbor we didn't come here this morning to fuss you better exchange the complaint for a praise swap it out right now 
said I'll give you a garment of praise if you give me a garment of mourning you can change clothes right now looked at somebody said neighbor if you really want to have church you better change your clothes right now take off that garment of mourning stop fussing put a smile on your face come on put a smile on your face and tell somebody neighbor I'm going through a hard thing but the God I serve he puts a smile on my face I might look crazy cause I'm smiling and crying at the same time look at somebody and testify and say neighbor I don't want you to think I'm crazy if you look my way and I'm praising and crying at the same time it happens every time I have a flashback the devil wants me to sit here and have a pity party but the devil is a liar I said he's a liar and Lord thank you Lord got you thinking that you gonna die in this situation got you thinking that God's gonna leave you there I find your neighbor as he lies the devil tells he's a liar hey God Jeremiah shook himself and he had a flashback and he said this I recall to my mind it is of the Lord's mercy that I have not been consumed he didn't leave me I might not be where I want to be but I'm not where I used to be I may not have everything I want but I got everything I need say yeah he said this I recall to my mind thank you Lord it is of the Lord's mercy anybody in here know about mercy what should have happened he didn't let it happen hey God walk over to somebody I want you to get in their face and said you better praise him cause what should have happened he didn't let it happen get up child of God and shout out the praise hallelujah and testify and say neighbor you know what hey God's been good and I'm doing even better than I thought I was come on tell one more person say I'm doing better than I thought I was I was not consumed because of his mercy hallelujah and his compassion it did not fail he didn't give up on me even when I gave up he didn't give up on me hey God and every day I got up in the morning new mercy look at your neighbor and said neighbor when I woke up this morning I had new mercy in the room with me new mercy kept me from an accident new mercy kept me from losing my mind new mercy kept me 
from running. New mercy. Say, 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 find your neighbor and say, I'm going through. But I want you to know I'm doing better than I thought I was. He said, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Even then, I'll walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I'll fear no evil because he's with me. His rod and his staff comforts me. And there is no weapon that's formed against you that shall prosper. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm not telling you to deny the problem. I'm not telling you to say it don't hurt when it does hurt. But I want you to see that you're doing so much better than you think you are. Lift up your hand and say he walks with me. He talks with me and he tells me I'm alone. Sure. Even in sorrow, strength, even in weakness, lift up your head and shout out a praise. I hear David say, cast your burden upon the Lord and he will sustain and he'll never permit the righteous to be moved. You shall be like a tree that's been planted by the rivers of water. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Hallelujah. Plans of welfare and no evil. I'm giving you an expected end. Pull somebody. Pull on them a little bit. And say, labor. You may not know it. But while you're going through, he's working it out. Every step. He's working it out. Every tear. He's working it out. Every pain. He's working it out. Say yeah. So didn't I command you? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It ain't time to give up. It's not time to walk away. Open up your mouth and let everybody hear you say, I'm doing better than I thought I was. I'm going to make it after all I've been through. I feel my health. Therefore, I have hope. Therefore, I have hope. Therefore, I have hope. I feel like running in the house. Therefore, I have hope. Wave your hand. Don't wait for your neighbor to encourage you. Encourage yourself and say, I'm going to make it. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going to make it. Oh, yes, I am. Yes, I am. Come on, Zion. Say it out of your mouth. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. Through the storm. I'm going to make it. Through the pain. I'm going to make it. Through the difficulty. I'm going to make it. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going to raise my hand. 
Mm. Say hallelujah. Mm. Anyhow, mm. I'm going to lift my voice mm. and say, I mm. feel blessed the Lord. Mm. At all times, mm. at his praise, mm. shall continually mm. be in my mouth. Mm. My soul. Shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Look down your road. I said, neighbor, if you don't have enough, let me share my joy with you. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Say yeah. Say yeah. I'm getting ready to sit down. But I need you to help me preach. I need you to step across the aisle and put your hand on somebody's shoulder. Come on. Walk around. Lay your hand on their shoulder. And say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been dealing with. I don't know what you've been going through. But I got a word. I want to drop in your spirit. You're doing better than you thought you were. Look at you. You're still here. Look at you. Running in your feet. Clapping in your hands. Look at you. Still in your right mind. Look at you. Release them. I say, look at me. I've been through hell. But I don't look like what I've been through. Look at me. I'm a living miracle. I should be dead. But I'm all right. Even though I'm going through now, I'm going to be all right. I got a feeling. Got a feeling everything. I said everything. I said everything. I said everything. I said everything. It's gonna be alright. Holy Ghost told me it's gonna be alright. Five three people. And just it's gonna be alright. It's gonna be alright. As a matter of fact, it's already getting better. It's already getting better. Did you hear that? Tell the devil to his face. It's already getting better. He's my healer. It's already getting better. He's my way maker. And I'm going to praise him right where I stand. Come on, refuse. If you're feeling better and you know you're better than you thought you were, I dare you. I dare you. I dare you to scream out of praise. I said, scream it out. I said, holla. I said, holla. Scream. He's been good. Scream. Yeah. 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 Who 
put your arms around somebody, tell them you're doing better than you thought you were. If you gotta go through it, go through it. He's already figured out how and when. Oh, 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 Shania! Oh, God! This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions <laughs> oh! hallelujah oh! Ah! come on and lift him up come on Zion lift him up I can't hear you Lift him up. His compassions fail if not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Oh, she amaya. Oh, Shamaya Hosahai Oh Oh Shama Glory Father, we thank you for the word. Take the seed that's been planted today and bring forth harvest in our lives. Jesus. The altar is ready. You have not given your life to the Lord Jesus. You have not been baptized into that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come. The day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. You want to be baptized into that wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You want to be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Come. You have a special need of prayer. Come. Touch and agree with the man of God. Whatever you need, he's able to supply. Yes. Glory to God. Come. Be 
the altar is ready. You don't have to leave the same way that you've come. Come. Those of you who have connected with us as we pray here, put your name in the comment section, won't you? So we could establish an electronic prayer line as well. Whatever your need is, you want to be baptized in Jesus' name. Email us at admin at grtdc.org. Someone from the staff, they'll know what to do. They'll touch you back. We'll make arrangements for you to be baptized in that name, Jesus Christ. You want to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost? Email us, admin at grtdc.org. But as we pray here, put your name in the comment section. Yes, Sister Wanda Johnson, we're praying God can fill with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Hallelujah. We're praying for you. The Wilson family, Sister Gloria Butler and family, Joseph Ireland, we're praying for you. Glory. Sister Tracy Smith Martin, praying for you. Praying for Tracy Bennett and Nicole Bennett. Anthony Hall, we're praying for you. The altar is ready. Come. Come. The Lord is here. Come. Praying for Sister Dee Dee Franklin. The Lord will touch and heal your body. Sister Beth Chisholm, we're praying for you. Sister Peggy Lee Young, we're praying for you. Mother Nina, Mother Nina Hawkins, we're praying for you. Yes. Burton and Roy families, we're praying for you. Elder and Mother Dempsey, we're praying for you. D. Young and family, we're praying for you. Come, the altar is ready. Strength like no other. Reach in. Sister Mary Bennett, we're praying for you. The Walker family, we're praying for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, touch every person that has joined the electronic prayer line. Everyone, every home that's represented. You know what they're going through, what they're in need of. Touch, Lord touch and heal and set free in the mighty name of Jesus whatever you do in this house do it in their house wherever they are stop by touch heal set free and deliver in the name of Jesus we count it done we receive it Lord in the name of Jesus we chest you are you are my strength strength like no other strength like no other we chest
You want to make Greater Refuge Temple your place of worship. You want to be a part of this congregation. You want to join this church. Come so we can extend to you the right hand of fellowship. Doors of the church are open. Who's there one? If not, Refuge, let's give Jesus some more praise. Come on, give him praise. I want to get a sacrifice from you. Take a sacrifice in your hand, won't you? Whatever that sacrifice is. And even if you don't have anything to give in this sacrificial offering, just come touch the basket. You'll consider your obedience better than the sacrifice. Pray that the Lord would put something in your hand for the next time. Because he gives seed to the sower. Father, we thank you for what you've done in this place, how you have blessed us. Thank you, Father. We know that we can't pay you for what you do, but we want to make sacrifice in your presence. Receive our sacrifice, even those who may not have anything to give because of their obedience in touching the basket, they too will receive a blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Stand, won't you, everyone who can stand, turn to the wall, follow the instruction of the usher.
bring that sacrifice. Sacrifice of praise into the house. We bring the sacrifice of praise.
have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. As often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord, but let a man examine himself. So let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Father, we love you. So much you've done for us. So many ways you've made. <laughs> Thank you. Most of all for salvation. You made a way. For us to have a right to the tree of life. You shed your blood. And had there been no shedding of blood, there'd be no remission of sins. Power in the blood. Healing in the blood. Deliverance in the blood. Salvation in the blood. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for every strike that was laid upon your back. For the piercing of your side. Out came blood and water. Thank you. You said as oft as we do this, we're remembering your sacrifice for us. Father, bless this table that has been set before us. And as we eat of your flesh and drink of your blood, let miracles break forth in the congregation. Let somebody shout out, I'm healed. <laughs> as they drink your blood, dry up every cancer cell as we partake of your body bless us one by one thank you lord thank you jesus for the sacrifice of jesus name take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me. This cup is the New Testament in my blood. Drink it. Drink ye all of it. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Shamaha. Oh, Kamaya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> we'll never lose its power. Oh, Yamasa.
bless you. And thank you so much for joining us today in worship. It is my prayer that you are enlightened, enriched, and encouraged by the word of God that went forth. Always praying that the Lord would strengthen your hearts and minds, bring you to a place that he wants you to be always. God is able to do just that. And just in case you are looking for a church home, want you to feel free to be a part of Greater Refuge Temple here in Washington, D.C. We'll be glad to take you under watch care and we'll do our very best to help you find a permanent place of worship in your area. We all need the Word of God and we all need a place where we can go and be fed the truth of God. And if you would like to plant a seed in this ministry and you haven't been able to do it yet, feel free, follow the instructions on the bottom of your screen. Our technician will make that information available to you. Admin at grtdc.org. You can send your prayer request, your request for membership, and someone from our staff will get back to you. Looking forward to meeting you again. Join us next week, won't you? But until then, be careful, be prayerful, and be holy. Shalom, shalom.